Hello, welcome to the physics video tutorials. This is Ray Optics session 5, 6 and 7. In this particular tutorial, we are going to learn about the spherical mirrors and everything related to them. For example, the ray tracing, sign convention to be followed if you want to solve the problems, formula for reflection from spherical mirrors, formula for the magnification and velocity of image in relation with the velocity of object. So these are the things we are going to cover about the spherical mirror. So what is this spherical mirrors? Suppose here we have a glass sphere. This is a hollow glass sphere. All right. So it's a hollow kind of a glass sphere with a certain thickness of material. And if we consider only a certain portion of this sphere, shown like this in this video. As you can see, this is one small portion of this complete sphere. Okay, so here one surface will be the concave and the opposite will be the convex. As you can see, this side is convex and here it is concave surface. If we polish the concave surface, then convex surface becomes a reflecting and it becomes a convex mirror. And if we polish on the convex side, then concave side will become reflecting and it will behave as a concave mirror. So here it is the 2D representation of convex and concave mirror. As you can see, this is our convex concave mirror and here it is our convex mirror. So concave mirror or the convex mirror both are part of a complete sphere. So sphere has got a certain radius and the center. So that particular center is the center of curvature for the mirror as shown in this next slide. Here it is our one convex mirror and this is what? This is the center of the mirror. As you can see here, this is the center of the mirror and this C is the center of curvature. So here it is the radius of the sphere. You can see it here also that this is the center of the mirror and here is the C point, the center of curvature. This one is concave mirror and this one is convex mirror. So here I introduce certain terms. For example, the first term is pole. Pole is generally the center of mirror. All right. So pole is center of mirror. So here it is of a pole and here in case of this concave mirror, here it is of a pole. Okay. Since it is a spherical mirror, that means a part of a complete sphere. So the center of that sphere, which is represented by C is what? The center of curvature. This is known as center of curvature of mirror. Okay. C. And normally we use capital R as the radius of curvature. So radius of curvature means the radius of the sphere whose part is this, the curved mirror. So that is the radius of curvature. Okay. And the line joining the pole and center of curvature here is this line, particular line in case of concave mirror or convex mirror. That particular line is known as principal axis. Okay. So, principal axis means a line joining pole and center of curvature. Okay, that is known as the principal axis. And some other points that I have already told you here that law of reflection is followed as it is as it was in case of plane mirror. The difference is that here the normal orientation for the different points are different. So, if we join the center of curvature of the mirror to any point on the mirror, that line will be serving the purpose of the normal. So, we have to apply the law of reflection according to the angle of the ray with such line. So, any point of the mirror joined with the center of curvature has to be the normal. Okay. So, law of reflection will be applied as it is. So, let's solve a couple of problems first before proceeding further just based on the law of reflection for example here if you are given with a concave mirror and it is a light ray which is incident on this concave mirror at an angle theta with the normal as you can see that here p is the pole of the mirror and c will be the center of curvature okay and i is the point where the light ray is incident which is parallel to this principal axis at this point i. So here it is theta angle 
which is the angle of incidence for this particular ray. So here it is said that they find the angle of incidence of ray for which it passes through the pole after reflection given that mi is parallel to cp that is given to you. So we have to find the value of the theta such that the reflected light intersects the pole of the mirror. So I have drawn the diagram for you. So join this point I to P. This is the reflected ray. As you know, according to the law of reflection, this particular angle has to be theta because light ray gets reflected at an equal angle with the normal as the incident ray because here C is the center of curvature. So according to the law of reflection, this angle must be theta. And since CP line and MI both are parallel, so this particular angle theta and this angle has to be alternately equal. Okay, so here this angle is theta, this angle is also theta. And now if we focus on this triangle C, P, I, then we know that CP as well as CI both are equal to the radius of curvature of the mirror. CP as well as CI both are equal. That means it is at least isosceles triangle. That means if it is isosceles triangle, then this particular angle should also be theta. Okay, because CI is same as CP. So if this angle is theta, then this angle is theta. And from here, we have already known that this angle is theta. So here in this triangle, the total must be 180. So 3 theta should be 180 degrees. That means theta has to be 60 degree. Okay, so answer to this question is 60 degree. So this question is just based on the law of reflection that light ray gets reflected at an angle that the incident ray makes with the normal. So that's the simple thing and rest is geometry. Okay, so here is once again the second problem. Find the distance CQ. Here C point is the center of curvature for this concave mirror. Okay, find the distance CQ if incident light ray parallel to the principal axis is incident at an angle I. Here it is given that I is the angle of incidence for this ray which is incident parallel to the principal axis at an angle I. So this line C joining this point is the normal. So here is I. That means the light ray which gets reflected must be reflected at the same angle I. So this angle has to be I. So we have to calculate the value of the CQ. So here you can see that this angle is I then it is since alternate angle. So it has to be I. Okay. Let's suppose this point is say A. So here we got to know that this angle is I. This angle is I. That means the triangle CQA is isosceles triangle. Okay. So a triangle CQA is isosceles triangle. That means C Q is equal to Q A. So here you can understand that this length C Q must be same as this Q A. So from this point Q, if we drop a perpendicular onto this line, then we must be aware that this foot of the perpendicular will be the midpoint of the line C A. Any line which joins the center of curvature will be equal to the length, the radius. So C A is R. So this length becomes R by 2 and this becomes R by 2. Let us suppose here B is the foot of the perpendicular drawn from the point Q. So here in this particular triangle C, B, Q which is a right angle triangle, we can apply cos I as what? Cos I will be C, B divided by C, Q. Okay, based upon hypotenuse. So cos I is equal to C B. C B is half the radius of curvature and C Q. C Q is something that we have to calculate. So here we have got the value of C Q which is equal to how much R divided by 2 cos of angle I. Okay, so that is our answer to this particular question. And here it is also said that also find the distance CQ if I is tending to 0. If this angle I tends to 0, then we know that cos I will be tending to 1. As I angle approaches 0, cos I will approach 1. That means CQ will become equal to R by 2 in that case. Okay. 
So light rays which are very much close to the principal axis are known as paraaxial rays. So for paraaxial rays, I angle has to be very small. So CQ is R by 2. Okay. CQ is R by 2. CP here we know that CP is equal to R. That means PQ is also R by 2 in this particular situation when I is tending to 0 in that case PQ is also R by 2. Okay, so for paraxial rays if we incident a ray parallel to the principal axis then the reflected ray basically intersects almost the midpoint of the radius of curvature and the distance of this point from the center from the pole of the mirror is known as the focal length and this point is known as the focus that we will learn a little bit later. So just remember this particular example so it will help you to understand this particular concept for paraxial rays. So let us now understand what is basically focus the principal focus. So we have two cases one for the concave mirror and the other for the convex mirror. So here are the two diagrams I have shown for the focus. So you can see that the rays coming parallel to the principal axis after reflection from the mirror they get focused to a particular point and that point is known as the principal focus. In case of concave mirror if we have a parallel beam of light then that particular parallel beam of light will be converged to a point on the principal axis which is known as the focus of this mirror. And here in case of convex mirror what we can see is that if we have a light beam parallel to the principal axis. So these two rays are representing the light rays coming parallel to the principal axis after reflection they appear to diverge from a particular point and that point is the principal focus for this convex mirror. So what is the definition how to write this definition combined for both concave and convex mirror. So for principal focus what we have light beam incident parallel to principal axis either converge to a point that means I am covering which one concave mirror. So light ray light beam incident parallel to principal axis either converge to a point or appear to diverge from a point and appear to diverge from a point in case of convex mirror that we know appear to diverge from a point on principal axis that point is called focus. So that point is focus and its distance from pole of the mirror its distance from the pole of the mirror is called focal length of mirror. Okay. So it is known as the focal length of the mirror. So light rays coming parallel to the principal axis either converge to a point or appear to diverge from a point. When we say that they converge to a point that means we are referring to our concave mirror and if they appear to diverge from a point then of course we are referring to the convex mirror. So this point is known as the focus and its distance from the pole of the mirror is known as the focal length. So here focal length is basically PF. As I told you in case of paraxial rays we can easily derive that focal length is almost half the radius of curvature. As you know suppose this particular angle is I then according to law of reflection this angle has to be I alternate angle I this and this. So these two angle I that means if we have this point as A then AF is same as FC. As you can see here we have proved that this triangle AFC is isosceles that means AF is same as FC and in case of paraaxial rays point A and point P will be very much close to each other. A and P will coincide almost in that case AF will be approximately equal to PF. So using this particular relation say it is equation 1 and here it is equation 2. If we compare these two we get to know that PF is almost equal to FC. As you can see here AF is same as FC. AF is approximately PF that means PF is approximately FC. Okay. So F means this point F is midway midpoint 
of PC. That means the focal length F is approximately R by 2 for paraxial rays and that is the case we usually will be using. The rays which are away from the principal axis are known as marginal rays. Marginal rays. So, marginal rays means rays away from axis means at a large distance from the axis are the marginal rays. So, here R by 2 focal length is for the paraxial rays and in most of the situations will take the situation as that of the paraxial rays. So, mostly unless until specified the calculations will be based on the paraxial rays. That means you will be using this particular result F is equal to R by 2 quite often. Okay, so radius of curvature is twice the focal length. So, you must have got what is the focal length and what is the point focus, the principal focus of these curved mirrors.